Right now we are sitting and fishing on the Mackey Reservoir in Idaho. We're kind of in central Idaho near some of the tallest peaks actually that are here. The tallest one is just maybe a couple of miles north that way. It's called Mount Bora. We're camping all the way up there on top of that hill in some free camping that we found. We left Hamilton about a week ago and we spent a couple nights in Salmon, Idaho. We didn't get a lot of filming done there because we were kind of in a crowded campground, but it was a cool place that we stayed. Uh, salmon's known for its salmon river fishing, which has a lot of salmon in it and steelhead. It's a really cool place. I caught a couple fish there on my fly. So yeah, after salmon we came here and we've been here for a few days and it's now gotten very cold. It got down to freezing a couple nights ago and the mornings are kind of chilly. So fall is on its way here very rapidly. On our way from Hamilton to Salmon, Idaho, we went through the Salmon River Canyon, which is like a really steep, cool canyon with a lot of cool towns in it. And one of the towns we passed is called Darby, Montana. And as we were driving through, we saw these symbols for this TV show we've been watching called Yellowstone. And yeah, it turns out that's actually where they filmed the whole thing pretty much. So that was really cool. We saw the film crews and we even saw, well, we drove by the ranch where the family lives. So that was really, really cool. The plan right now is to spend a couple of days in Mackey, Idaho, do a little fishing, maybe even paddleboard if it warms up. And then we're gonna head south to our hunting spot and hunt for a couple of weeks. It's gonna be really fun. Now we're hoping that we can catch some fish so we have something for lunch. So far it's been kind of successful. We've caught, I've caught a fish and he's caught a fish. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> they're not really biting right now, but it is fall, so it's not really known as the best fishing time. <laughs> we always try though. <laughs> The water has gone down so much since we got here. It's like 20 feet. Yeah, it was like all the way up there. Come on now. That was a big fish. That must have been a carp. Oh yeah. Oh, I, got one. I don't know if I'm getting this hook back. <laughs> you really nice. swallowed it. It's a little thing. reservoir trout. It's beautiful. Oh man. Oh man. Oh yeah, I don't know. I might have to just kill him and cut my losses. I don't think I've ever seen a hook in here quite this much. Don't lose it. Okay, well here he is. <laughs> Finally got one. Yep. So even though this trout is a little small, we're still gonna eat it because it died from the hook being inside of it. And I mean, it'll be enough food for one of us at least. Uh, so now I'm just gonna gut it. Uh, it. It is dead and I've also made sure it was dead, so. There's no worries there. <laughs> um, but when you gut a fish, basically you're just gonna cut from here all the way up to around here. And then we open the jaw like this and then you can just pull the guts out. I don't know how graphic we want to get with this, but. You don't have to cut very deep, just kind of keep it pretty shallow. This knife is way too big, but this is just the knife that I always use. Cut out that. And it all just comes right out. Feed the birds. Then you see this blood right here on the spine. You gotta clean that out with your finger. Push it all out. Oh, this one's white. The last fish we caught in here was had orange meat, which is better, but this one must be kind of young. All these trout come from a hatchery, pretty much. They put them in in the spring. So yeah, then you just clean it out real good, and then you're ready to take it and flare, or some people would even probably cook them this way. 
You can also skin it really easily if you pull the head back and you can pull the skin right off, but I actually don't like doing it that way. So I'm just gonna skin it and flay it with a knife. Hopefully with a little breading and some egg, this will be enough to make a sandwich at least. So I'm starving, which means we're gonna just flay this fish and eat it right now. Doesn't get any fresher than that. <laughs> um, before I flay it, I'm just gonna show you kind of what I use to bread it. I just use a mixture of panko and breadcrumbs. So it's like some big chunky breadcrumbs, which is the panko, and then the finer regular breadcrumbs. And then just egg. I'll salt it a little bit with garlic salt. And usually that's pretty good. Let's see, wash them off a tiny bit more. Okay, usually the trout from the reservoirs here in Idaho will turn like a pinkish color. The meat will. But this one's white, which means he's pretty young. But that's okay. So this is how I flay a fish. I don't know if it's the exact right way. Because I've kind of just had to teach myself. But this is just how I do it. I just start down here at the tail. Make a cut down till I reach the, the bone of the spine, which will go all the way up. And then you just kind of follow that spine. And you see here, I'm following that bone right there with the knife. And you just get as much meat as you can off of there. It's a little harder with these smaller ones to flay them quite as good as I usually do. So this is not the best one to show people on, but <laughs> we'll make it work. Just a little, little tiny flay there. Flip them over to the other side. This also is not actually a fillet knife either, which doesn't help, but it's what we have, so you gotta make it work, right? Yeah, if anybody has any tips on how to flay fish better than what I'm doing, I would love to hear them. So now I'm gonna kinda trim. Well, okay, what I'm gonna do first is <coughs> pin bone it. Not a lot of people do this on such small fillets, but I kinda like the practice. But you see there's this line of bones right here. You can actually cut those out if you're really careful with your knife without losing too much meat. Now that all the little bones are gone, I'm going to skin it. It's going to be hard to do on this little flay, but so usually I get it started like that. And I use this paper towel so I can grip the fish because otherwise it just slips through my fingers. I know fillet boards have like a clip you can clip them to, but I don't have a fillet board, so. So yeah, and then I just hold the skin, and I kind of try to pull it as tight as I can, and then I just sort of run the knife along the bottom between the meat and the skin as best I can. This is much faster with larger fish, by the way. This is like the worst fish I could possibly show people how to fillet fish on. So now we've got just this little cute little fillet here. Hardly any meat left on the skin. That was actually, I'm pretty proud of myself for that one. Do this next one and then we can bread it. So now i got these little tiny fillets. This is probably only gonna be enough food for maybe one and a half of us for lunch, but hey, it's better than letting it go to waste. I'm just gonna salt these fillets with some garlic salt. And then I do bread egg, and then bread again, because with such tiny fish fillets it's nice to get a lot of breading on there so that you have some food. <laughs> and then I'm just going to fry them in some oil here. Uh, you could cook them in butter too if you wanted. I like them fried though. They'll be like little fish sticks. the temperature a little high. Got some potato bread with the tartar sauce, ketchup, and onions, and now we just need some fish on there. Ten dollars. How are they? Mm. Good? So it's the last day of August and it's been the coldest day of the summer and I think it's almost going to get down to freezing tonight. It's crazy. I think it's just like 50 degrees is the high today. So we thought it'd be fun to maybe just go on a hike and we're actually near the tallest peak in Idaho, Mount Bora. 
it's like 12,000 something. These peaks back here, they're also like really, really tall. But the hikes to all of them are very difficult, like really hard. So we're not gonna do any of those, especially since it's all cloudy up there anyways. We've decided to just do a hike to a waterfall that's kind of around town. It's just gonna be like a short three miler, but it's still supposed to be kind of difficult. So we'll see how it is. It's the fall, so it might be kind of low, the water levels. We made it to the trailhead, but the road was pretty long and rocky, so I don't know if a car could do it actually, but we were finding our truck. There's supposed to be a lot of old mining stuff along this hike, because this area had a lot of mining way back when. There's even mining today, but 